As the original meter test switch manufacturer, Tesco is your trusted source for meter test switches. From the first patent in 1920 to today, Tesco's test switches are designed to combine the best features of tried and proven switching methods with improvements in materials and construction. With the shortest lead times in the industry and the ability to custom manufacture to your specifications, let Tesco fulfill your next order for test switches. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, we've been uh, working this out a little bit this morning, making sure the technology is cooperating. And this age of COVID now and everybody using Zoom, uh, as you can all imagine, uh, sometimes it can be challenging to get all this stuff to play nicely. Anyways, uh, today we're gonna talk about test switches and the use and operation of test switches and different configurations and so on. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. In theory. <laughs> there we go. All right. I should have gone to the second page here. All right. So uh, this first slide is, is basically um, a slide that is going over the, the history uh, of test switches and showing some of the uh, uh, earlier versions of test switches as they evolved over the years and uh, what they look like. And then obviously we're gonna be showing some pictures of modern day uh, test switches, but this is kind of the evolution of the test switch. Uh, Tesco basically held the original patent uh, on test switches. Uh, so it is the 100th anniversary of that patent and these are some of the older configurations and what they looked like in the early days. So here are a couple of uh, diagrams of the original patent uh, from August 17, 1920. Um, and as you can see, test switches look dramatically different back then, uh, but it's kind of nostalgic to take a look at this. And this is uh, some actual captures we cleaned up a little bit from the original patent. Uh, it's now 100 years old, so we thought we'd kind of throw that in there. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. So what we're going to try to do here is acquaint everybody uh, with test switches and the purpose of test switches, what they're used for, why they are uh, advisable to use. So we're going to cover using the test switches, uh, the specifications, the ANSI specifications for test switches. Uh, some of the accessories that go along uh, with test switches and then get into pre-wired uh, meter sockets like you see in the picture over there to the right. So that would be your typical pre-wired box that would come ready to go. Uh, basically stock it on the shelf, pull it off the shelf, take it out, go install it in the field, and just wire it up uh, to the potentials in the CT secondaries and pop a meter in there and you're ready to go. Go ahead to the next slide, Andy. So we're going to talk about self-contained a little bit. Typically, those are found in residential applications like your home. Could also be found on a commercial polyphase service like a 16S meter. So basically what that means when they say self-contained is that all the current that that home or that business is using is flowing directly through the meter. So if it's a class 200 meter, you can handle up to 200 amps in that home or business. If it's a class 320 meter, all of that current is gonna flow through the meter uh, to the home or business. So it's connected directly to the load being measured and it is part of the circuit itself. Once the meter has been removed in a self-contained environment, uh, the customer loses power, whether that be a residence or, uh, you know, a store in a strip mall or whatever the case may be. When you pull that meter, since it's in the circuit, uh, the customer loses power. Go on to the next page. For transformer rated services, it measured a scaled down representation of what the actual load is. So, it could be 69 kV, you know, uh, coming in on the lines, and you're gonna use PTs to knock that voltage down to something the meter can handle, you know, 480, 277, 120, 
uh, a lower voltage. And that scaling is accomplished using a PT. Same goes with the current. If we're talking about uh, a facility that's using more than 320 amps, you know, if we're using 400, 500, 1,000 amps, whatever the case may be, uh, you're going to need to use current transformers to knock that current down to a level that the meter can handle. Uh, so when you're dealing with uh, transformer rated meters, that is 20 amps uh, is, is usually the max current that that meter can deal with. And, you know, the CTs knock it down to typically something to five. Uh, but the max uh, class of the meter is a class 20 as opposed to whether you're residential and commercial meters are class 200s and class 320s. So in the case of a transformer rated service, the meter is not actually part of the service. It's not in the circuit. So if you were to pull a meter on a transformer rated service, that factory, that office building, that Walmart, whatever the case may be, would not lose power because it's not actually part of the circuit. And you can just open up those test switches and run a test on the meter or pull the meter or whatever your purpose for being on that site is uh, without the customer losing power. Um, let's go ahead to the next slide, please. So here's kind of a, a block representation of what it would look like. You've got a three-phase service here with 400 to five CTs on it. Uh, you've got, the, in this case, donut type CTs with the conductors running through the hole and the donut type CTs. These could also be bar CTs, uh, as well as the donut type CTs with the hole in them. And then they're measuring the primary current. And on the secondary side, they're gonna go down through the test switch and ultimately through the meter. That allows you to interrupt uh, both the potential and the currents uh, from the meter. So you can do testing. And also for safety purposes, if you want to do a meter change out, you just flip up all the potentials or pull down on the potentials, depending upon how the test switch is configured, and it would cut power to the meter. Um, let's go ahead to the next slide. So there is a, an actual test switch in use. Uh, so you've got crocodile clips on the potentials in neutral, and then you have your, your duckbill connectors in the test jacks. Um, basically, they're called test plugs, but duckbill is their uh, nickname because of how they look. So they're going to go in those test jacks. And this is for when you want to test the meter, the site, and the CTs. So with all this wired up to the test switch, and you're using uh, a site tester that is capable of testing the meter, the CTs, and the whole site to make sure everything's wired properly. This is what it would look like uh, in the real world when you've hooked it all up and are ready to run a test on that site, that meter, and those CTs. Uh, you can go ahead to the next slide. So testing current transformers while they're in service is very dangerous. Uh, you have to follow certain safety procedures. Um, you never open a test switch and leave the secondary of the test, uh, excuse me, leave the secondary of the transformer in an open state. So modern day test switches, the minute you pull the first test switch, it shunts the CT or shorts the secondaries on the CT. And then you can put your test plug in, your duck bill, and then push that switch back in. And then your test device, uh, whatever that device may be, a CT burden and ratio tester, a full site tester, uh, whatever that product is, is going to be now part of the circuit and see that secondary current. But you can never open up that circuit unless you first shunt it with the first switch and then open up your test jack, put in your test plug, then push that shunt back in, it becomes part of the circuit. If you do uh, inadvertently, for whatever reason, leave that secondary of a current transformer open and not shorted together or not in part of the circuit of the test device, uh, the voltage can basically rise and rise and rise um, almost to infinity um, and generates a real great hazard as far as electrical shock goes. Um, it can definitely be a very dangerous situation, even if you've got your PPE on, uh, which you should have on. 
there's still that hazard that it could arc out and um, be a problem. The other thing is when you leave the CT secondaries open, uh, it is hazardous to the CT itself. It can break down uh, the transformer uh, insulation inside. It can cause the CT to overheat, and worst case scenario, the CT could catch fire, possibly even explode. Uh, bad things happen when you leave a CT secondary in the open state, especially if there's a lot of current on the primary side. Uh, that's really gonna have a, a more of an impact when you have a high current on the primary, if you leave that secondary of the CT in an open state. Um, so, that's basically it um, for this one. Let's go to the next slide. These are some typical meter forms and how you would connect them up to a test switch. You can go ahead and flip to the next slide. Uh, that's hardly legible because it's small. Um, you've got your ANSI C12 definitions, which defines here's what constitutes a set test switch. Uh, here's uh, the requirements for a test switch. Uh, but there are also a lot of other things that there's no ANSI standard for, such as the color of the handles, uh, whether the potentials are pull up or pull down. That's not called out uh, in the ANSI specifications. And then the different materials uh, the test switches are made out of. Uh, you can have uh, plain bare copper, like you see over there on the right. You can have the tin plated over copper, more resistant to corrosion than just plain copper that would get a green corrosion on it. Uh, in caustic environments, uh, seaside environments where you have salt air. Uh, so if you believe your test switches are going to be in an environment where there are caustic uh, vapors in the air, such as near a paper mill or something, uh, wherever that might be, or if it's on a coastal area and you're getting, you know, sea air with salt in it, uh, we recommend the tin plating or even more resistant to corrosion would be nickel plating uh, that's used mostly in, in coastal areas. Um, the barriers obviously uh, prevent uh, any arcing between one phase and the next. Um, they're basically a plastic barrier that's rated uh, usually at like 600 volts, uh, so it does not have an opportunity to arc from one phase to the next. And then you've got your different types of wiring connections. You have your box connectors, which is the one with the tin plating on it there on the left. And then you have your screw and nut type connectors where you wrap the wire around it uh, or use a, a staked on round ring type terminal on the end of the wire and put that on the, and then tighten it down. Whereas the box connectors, you just insert the wire and crank the screw down and it comes down on the conductor and uh, holds tight on the conductor and what to look for and covers. I highly recommend covers. I've been out to a lot of sites uh, where the switches get pretty nasty and they get mud and gunk and uh, you know, spider webs and bee nests and anything you can imagine that will gunk up the test switches. In some of those cases, you may have to take that test plug or that duckbill and move it in and out of the test jack several times to break loose the the mud and the gunk and the dust and whatnot uh, to get a good electrical connection. I've found that in many cases, if you don't have the covers on the test switch, they tend to get pretty nasty. Go ahead, uh, next slide. Oops, sorry. Oops. That's right. <laughs> um, here are the actual uh, ANSI C129 uh, switch definitions, talking about some of the basic uh, features of a test switch, what it is intended to do, the dimensions and so on, uh, having the uh, short circuiting switch to make before break, uh, whereby you pull that test switch out and it instantly shunts or shorts the CT secondaries together. And then you have your test jack, which is where your duct bill or your test plug goes in uh, to become part of the circuit so you can test CTs in the site and so on. Um, the test plug, we've talked about the voltage switch, obviously, or the potential switches. Uh, there are different configurations, different orientations of how test switches are built. You can have some test switches where all the potentials are to the left and all the currents are to the right, or they can be intermingled, you know, phase A potential, phase A current, 
phase B potential, phase B current, phase C uh, potential, phase C current, and so on. And we'll show you some of those different configurations as we move along. Um, in this case, 20 amp minimum. Uh, like I said, that's the, the, the maximum that you're typically going to see on a transformer rated system is 20 amps. Uh, and then the voltage ratings. Uh, name plates, uh, movable parts, uh, lock nuts or pins. Uh, we prefer captive hardware, uh, although it's up to the customer. Captive hardware is nice because if you pull off the plastic cover, uh, you don't lose the wing nuts and drop them into the snow or into the dirt and have to fish around for them. The hardware that uh, asphyxes the cover to the test switch is part of the cover and it's connected to the cover and doesn't fall off. Now, next slide, please. And here's some different configurations where everything is located. Like I say, the orientations can be different depending upon customer. Uh, four pole switches, seven pole switches, 10 poles, six poles. Uh, there are a lot of different types of configurations. Go ahead to the next slide. And these are the general specifications, you know, insulated covers, uh, mounting holes, obviously, to mount it into the meter socket. Um, you can provide the, the little test clips or the tabs uh, on the terminals. Uh, that would be for hooking up uh, your easy hooks uh, to, you know, the potentials, the currents uh, for testing purposes. Uh, or you can use the crocodile type or the dolphin type uh, clips. There are different methods of, of hooking into uh, a test switch, and that's pretty much whether or not you've got the little tabs on your test switches. Um, a lot of times I find populations of test switches within a utility. Some have the little test tabs, some do not. Um, in those cases, you know, recommend the, the crocodile type uh, or dolphin type connectors. So you can make the connection. You can go to the next slide. There we go. So test quiz configurations. Uh, there's a drawing there. This is a typical drawing we would produce for a customer specific test switch. As you can see, all the test switch handles are color coded per our customer's requirements. Usually, those test switch handle colors match the color of the wire that terminates to them. Uh, that way, you don't have to worry about tracing things out. You know that the orange wire goes to the orange switch and the red goes to the red and the black goes to the black and so on. Um, and I find that every customer is a little different as far as the wire colors and the test switch handle colors that they use. Um, also the potentials. Um, there are preferences as it relates to the potential switches. Uh, a lot of utilities believe in the pull down, like in this picture here, their pull down potentials. Problem with the pull down potentials uh, is that the knife switch blade is hot. So if you were to drive, drop a screwdriver or drop some hardware, they could create an arc flash if they landed across the two knife switch blades uh, because they are hot. Uh, some utilities prefer pull up on the potentials. So if you pull up on the potentials, the only hot spot is down there at the bottom where the wires terminate and there's barriers in there. Uh, to protect against, you know, if you were to drop a screwdriver or some hardware, it's very unlikely that it would get across two phases and cause an arc flash. Over to the right, it shows the current links. Uh, current links basically tie the commons together. So when you pull the first switch and you want to shunt the CT secondaries, brings those CTs together, shorts them together, uh, and also provides a common for the bottom of the test plug. You'll see that there are three of them one for each of the current pairs. Uh, down the bottom, there is a special current link uh, that can also, it's an option. It will short them all together so you only have to bring one terminal from the last current pair uh, on the test plug bottom, bring that one to the grounding stud in the enclosure itself as opposed to having to run three wires and daisy chain them together and run the final wire uh, to the ground stud 
uh, in the meter socket. So you ground all those neutrals. Um, all right, uh, pretty much covered this slide. You move on to the next one, please. So this is just one example of a, of a customized switch for a particular customer. This is the type whereby the currents and the potentials are interposed. You'll see wherever the barriers are uh, in the center of the barriers is the potential. So you've got your two currents, your first one being your shunt, uh, pulls down, shorts the CT secondaries. Then you can open up the test jack, put in the test plug, and push that red switch back in. And now the device you're using to test the CTs uh, is in circuit with that. Um, and then you've got your next potential, and your next current pair, your next potential, and your next current pair. And on the far end, that white one is your neutral. You can go ahead to the next slide, please. This is uh, what I find to be a more common configuration. Um, in this case, all the potentials are to the left. And they've got the barriers in there separating the different potentials. So going from left to right, your red is your phase A potential, your yellow is your phase B potential, your blue is your phase C potential, and the white there is your neutral. Uh, I've yet to ever find an instance where somebody says we open up the neutrals. So a lot of people do not even have a switch for that white switch there in the fourth position over. Uh, they have just a solid bar and because I, I don't know of any valid application where you would actually open up the neutral. And then all the other switches are your current pairs for A, B, and C phases. And the first one there, the red, white, that's your shunt. The second one is your test jack and so on and so on all the way to the end of the switch. Um, you'll also notice that all the current pair test handles uh, are dual colored. So it would be a red wire with a white stripe or a red wire with a black stripe or a yellow wire with a white stripe. That way, again, the wire that terminates to the test switch matches the color of the handle. Uh, so they're very easy to wire up. If you wire your own enclosures, uh, they're very easy to you know trace out. You don't have to get your own meter out if somebody wired it accordingly. Uh, it should be connected correctly because the colors match the wire colors. Go ahead to the next slide, please. Uh, this is a test switch. I didn't have an actual in the field or uh, real world test switch to show, but these are less common, but we do offer these as well, and they're pretty common out in the field. These are the box connectors, uh, whereby you would you know, back out the screw counterclockwise, as you see at the bottom of the test switch, slide the conductor, whether that be stranded, whether it has a terminal on it, or whether it's just a solid copper wire, and then torque the screw down onto the wire, making good connection, making sure it's a good tight connection. So those box terminals, they're popular with some utilities and not others, uh, but it is uh, a common type of test switch connection. Go ahead to the next one. So these are the accessories. Uh, your test plug is down there in the bottom right, also referred to as the duck bill because of how it looks. So. The leads are terminated with a test switch and a safety probe with this test plug on the end of it uh, used for CT testing. And then, as I said earlier, you have your first test switch before the test jack uh, that is your make or break uh, connection. So that will short the CT secondaries. And then you put in your test plug into the test jack and push that back in. So now your test device that's testing those CTs is in circuit. Um, that cover that you're seeing there is not like the permanent covers uh, that uh, adhere to the posts on the side of the uh, test switch uh, for permanent use. This type of isolator is for when the test switches are in their open position and you're working on the meter and these test switches are open so they, those potential blades are hot and this would allow you to just put this temporary cover on it while the switches are open, while those uh, knife blades on the potentials are hot, so that if you do happen to drop some hardware or a screwdriver, it's just going to bounce off that temporary cover. Uh, let's go ahead to the next slide, please. These are the ANSI C1219 test jack specifications. This is the actual jack that the 
chest plug or the duct bill plugs into, basically the specs for the test jack itself, dimensions and so on. Go ahead to the next slide, please. These are the specifications on the test plug, the duct bill connectors are referred to, and you know how they need to be uh, constructed to meet the ANSI specs and the materials they're made out of, uh, insulators, so on. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide, please. I run into a lot of cases, and I'm sure there are some of you on the line here today. Uh, that not all of your sites have test switches installed uh, in the meter socket, uh, which makes it a little difficult to test the CTs, to test the site itself, or test the meter in place. Um, this is for testing your CTs if you don't have test switches. So you would pull your meter. Typically, these would be self-shunting sockets. So the minute you pull the meter, it would shunt the CT secondaries. You would plug in this adapter. And this adapter, as you can see in the little cutout under the handle, those are your test jacks. So you have your three test jacks. And then you have your potentials and a neutral. So you can go ahead and test a site uh, as you would a site that has a test switch installed on it. And uh, highly recommend that all of your transformer rated sites uh, do have test switches. Uh, but in the interim, this is a solution for testing those sites that don't have test switches uh, safely. And go ahead and go to the next slide. <clears throat> so the pre-wired transformer rated enclosures, that's just basically a socket uh, where you install a test switch in it and wire it up to the socket terminals itself. So it's basically ready to install in the field. Uh, there are various different types of covers. Uh, the cover you see there is a one-piece uh, ringless style cover. There are also two-piece covers where you have the lower half where uh, you just open up the lower half of the socket and you have the test switches exposed. You don't actually have access to the terminals on the meter. The meter is still covered at this point and just the test switches uh, are open and activated and ready to be able to be tested. Uh, with just the bottom half pulled off. So that's your two piece covers. There's also the ring style covers, uh, whereby you can put in a locking ring uh, to lock that meter in place. If you have uh, customers who have historically uh, tried to do some current diversion or theft of service, uh, you might put those locking rings uh, on those particular customers that have had a history of theft of service. And uh, in those cases, you'd use the ring style sockets instead of the ringless style sockets. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead to the next slide. It's just uh, some pictures of uh, our people working at our factory in Bristol, Pennsylvania, uh, putting together test switches, putting together pre-wired meter sockets. Uh, over on the left, there's a whole meter socket being put together and wired up. And down there on the right picture, she's just assembling a test switch putting together manually, piece by piece, made in America and Pennsylvania. Uh, let's go ahead to the next slide, please. So transformer rated testing using uh, a site analyzer like our 6330. Uh, this is what it would look like, that picture on the left. This is what it would look like for a real world site test whereby you have your three Rogowski coils on each phase, the red, the yellow, and the blue uh, ring style Rogowski coils that are on each of the phases. And you can see that the CTs for this are uh, bar type CTs just above uh, the Rogowski coils for testing. And then if you'll look up at the test switch, uh, that's, a, that's the test switch that I blew up in an earlier slide. You can see that all the connections are made to the potentials. The duct bills are plugged into the test jacks. And now you're in a position to be able to test the CTs, to be able to test the meter, and to be able to test the entire site, making sure those CTs are accurate, that they work under a burden, whatever their max burden may be. Um, you can also do DMAG if you run into a magnetized CT and also testing not just the meter and the CTs, but the entire site to ensure that the site is wired properly, that there are no reversed CT secondaries or uh, swapped phases, you know, 
uh, those are the kind of things can be picked up in a full site test like this, uh, making sure that everything was wired right from the get go. And then on the right there, you could see uh, one of our technicians actually testing it in our factory, uh, simulating a real world environment there. He's got a meter socket and running current through it and has all the connections made to the potentials and the duct bills plugged in. And this is how we real world test uh, our site testers before they go out the door. And that's about as real world as you can get. Let's uh, move on to the next slide. Uh, this is just a little multiple choice quiz. Uh, we're, we're not gonna grade you on this. Uh, so what type of metering service typically would have a test switch? A, self-contained, uh, here's some beeping. Uh, B, transformer rated, C, gas. Uh, that's that's pretty easy based on what we covered. Uh, it is transformer rated services. Uh, why would you wanna reverse the potentials on a test switch? And we got A, B, and C, aesthetics, to use multiple voltages or to ensure that the potential knife blades are not hot when open for safety. Uh, answer to that one is obviously C. Uh, those pull-ups on the potentials make it less likely that you would drop a screwdriver or a piece of hardware and it would come across those knife blades on the potentials and create a arc flash situation. Um, what is the purpose of a current link on a test switch? To enable a connection to the test jack and shunt the current secondary pair to complete the current circuit, to connect the current pairs to potentials, to eliminate the need for barriers between the poles. Uh, that's a trick question. It's none of the above. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, this is our upcoming presentations. Uh, on October 27th, we have CT testing theory in practice. On the 3rd of November, we have ratio burden and admittance testing for CTs. And on November 10th, lessons learned from AMI deployments, asset management readiness, uh, on the 17th of November, it's a uh, course on harmonics. On 1st of December, we have complete site testing, like you saw on that one slide, where all the Rogowski coils were hooked up to each phase, all the potentials, and you saw the test device sitting there, the 60T30. Um, and that's a scenario where it would run through and do a complete site test, everything there, making sure that everything is working properly and in all of the components are accurate, the meter, the CTs, et cetera. Uh, and then on the 8th of December, we're gonna get into electric vehicle trends, uh, calibration of commercial chargers. Um, for those of you that didn't already know, Tesco is in the EVSE market, which is very much like electric metering, except for this is the measurement of charging stations. So you have charging stations out there like the Tesla stations that many of you have seen at gas stations and off of interstates, but there are all kinds of chargers, class one, class two, rapid DC chargers. There's a lot of different types of chargers and they too need to be tested just like a meter uh, to a NIST traceable device, uh, like a standard. They have their equivalent to a standard. They also have equivalent to load boxes and that's what that's gonna be on. And then on the 15th, uh, street lights and 5G metering and testing. Uh, these are the new uh, smart poles, as they call them, that can have cell sites on them. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure who's giving that one. It might be John Carroll. Um, and finally, I think the last slide coming up, you can go ahead and flip to that. Well, we want to thank you for tuning in and uh, see you at the next session. You saw the schedule there. Uh, there'll be notifications going out and yeah. uh, if anybody has any questions uh fire away i can see the panel over here on the right yeah thanks so much dan i uh, appreciate that and again if anyone has any questions there's that little chat box in the bottom right hand side uh, make sure it's addressed to everyone so we can see you and you can ask us any of your questions on anything with the meter test switches that Dan went over, anything that you saw in today's presentation, any questions you might have for us in general, we'll take. And if you guys um, will we'll be 
posting this on our website, tescometering.com. And then in a couple of days, we get a recording of this and we send that back out in an email. And I know some of you have reached out to me directly, and this is Andy, by the way. So um, you can feel free to reach out to me and we'll get you guys on a link. Sometimes it might um, hit your spam filters and not get through to you, but we'll make sure if you're missing any of these presentations, or the link to our meetings that you've signed up to just kind of let us know. We'll make sure you get that information and you're online for each of our sessions. Um, but again, if you have any questions for today, that chat box is open. We'll hang out for a little bit. If you think of something afterward, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we're always happy to get your questions. We're always happy to get suggestions for an upcoming Tesco Tuesday. We could throw in for you guys. If you have anything you think of that we could go over for you. And uh, otherwise, we'll see you guys next week then. Thank you so much for taking your time out today to join us. Do you have anything to add, Dan? No, that's it. I think uh, you covered it. And um, I don't see any uh, questions popping up here. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll call it a wrap. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll talk to you all next week. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Take care.